Hi there, I'm back again. Uh, it's the next day now and um, it's afternoon. I had a problem this morning. Um, I wasn't able to record because we've had workmen out in the street um, doing a fair bit of work. Um, I'm not really sure on what, but they were digging, oh, they were cutting through the concrete path and that makes a heck of a noise. <laughs> So, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to record. Thankfully, they've packed up now and, and left. So, I'll just do a bit more on this. Um, while I was off camera, I just put the detail of her dress back in by just tracing over with the pencil again. And I've sort of done a bit of a makeshift face on her there. And um, so I'm going to spend a bit of time now... Um, painting in her face and um, then I'll probably do a bit more detail on her dress so um, yeah I'll start with her eye colour I don't know how this is going to turn out because it's such a small face that I'm doing and I haven't had a lot of practice at doing small ones so if it turns out a bit dodgy You'll know why. Just taking a bit of paint out of the cap because I only need a tiny little bit. But yeah, this is the whole journey here. From start to finish with mistakes and all. So... Giving out green eye colour for the moment, see how that looks. Yeah, even the traffic's noisy today, it being Friday. Um, generally more busy on Friday and extremely busy on Saturdays. So, yeah, a bit of traffic noise. White. I didn't get white out, did I? A bit of white for the white of her eyes. Oh, my chair is so creaky. Shush. good exercise in um, <laughs> practicing how to do things on a funny angle because normally I would have my head right over the top of the page and be able to see better what I'm doing but this isn't too bad and it's a good excuse for um, what am I doing inside her pupil? See, I don't, I'm not um, focusing on what I'm doing. It's supposed to be on the outside. <laughs> well, she could have white pupils. She could be a real freaky, creepy lady. <sighs> Still cold. Still cold winter, but we've got a nice amount of sunshine today which is always cheering. I've almost wiped out the green. <laughs> this is going to take me a few tries to get it right. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what those workmen were doing. It might have been that trying to dig down and access some wiring so we have underground street lighting here and there are all sorts of wires the um, phone lines and all of that's underground so they may have needed access to do something with that 
I don't know if you've ever heard um, concrete being cut through, but oh, it's almost ear piercing, especially when it's close up to you. And like I said, we're fairly close to the road, so they weren't that far away from this window. for a minute and I'll just keep retouching it up until I get it how I really want it. Now I need to dig out some marker to do. I think this is probably the best one I have that's working. A lot of them have dried up. Um, when I was in the art store uh, recently um, the guy there gave some good advice because my husband uses the permanent markers as well and he finds them very frustrating because they keep drying up and the guy at the art store said to keep them always upside down so that the ink goes into the nib um, which has really helped it's made a big difference I've noticed with my markers um, rather than you know lying them down flat to keep them upside down Good, so I'll just do a bit here while waiting for that paint to dry. So just put a little bit of detail in her dress. This is her sleeve. Oops, where am I going? Yeah, she's by no means perfect. those guys have finished for the day and don't come back, you know, that they've gone off for lunch or something and they're coming back later. Oh, not doing this line very well. <coughs> I had to bring her dress down a little bit because it was, um, it was on a real angle. Didn't look quite right. <laughs> The last couple of um, videos I've been okay, but now I've got the shakes again. It's ridiculous. Mm. I've looked at so far I've looked at what I've um, recorded and gee it goes on I was saying it goes on a long time so um, for those of you that like the really long videos once again this is a good one for you I really like this yellow on her dress but um, I think I'll leave it. Maybe it'll look better after I put these lines in and well, we'll see. See how it turns out. If I don't like it I might change it a little. While I was off camera I also went, I did another coat on her dress and more of her skin tone and I actually, um, oops, I cleaned the stencils last night and left them to sort of 
stand up and, and dry. And then I brought them in here this morning and put them on the table and started putting them away. And some of them still had a couple of drops of water that I hadn't seen. And they dropped onto um, this page they dropped onto a leg here. And so I thought, oh, I'll just wipe that with my finger. <laughs> It wasn't that such of a great idea because it then took off a big area of the paint. So I thought, oh, I'll fill that back in. So yeah, I did that. And, um, it looks alright now. A lot of the, the bumpiness of the um, sewing pattern tissue paper shows up, of course, when you paint over it. to get that really fine detail and have it looking all right. Might do a bit more. I, sh I should have actually done the white first. But because you're watching and the camera's on, I did it wrong. Always the way by yourself quietly doing it and things turn out really great well not perfect but good enough you know that you're happy with it turn the camera on and you make heaps of mistakes things don't turn out how you want them to but it's nice for me anyway to watch the process of someone doing things like that and to know that I'm no different to them, you know. They go through the different phases where something looks really shocking and you're not happy with it. <laughs> and then as you keep going you manage to fix it up or not. Yeah, it's good. It's good seeing someone's process warts and all and like I said before I don't have anything to teach you because I'm still learning myself and in a lot of cases I probably do things entirely wrong you know according to the proper way to do it I do the opposite <laughs> I did discover something really um, good this morning while I was trying to draw in her face. You know those kneadable erasers that you can get, um, that you put them into shape and you sort of dab at the pencil marks and you can get them off? I've got some of that but I couldn't find where I've put it. So I tried something else which is actually looks the same but it's not it's a big old blob of that um, tacky stuff that you use to hang up posters or something we call it blue tack here and um, it was just sitting on the inside of my drawer and I thought I might try that and it works really really well um, I'll show you just quickly Bit of tracing paper here say if I draw a line and I don't like that line there I'll take me those of that that line there I'll just go over it if you can see it 
takes it away. So you don't need to buy that stuff if you've got some of this. Use that instead. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm always interested in a cheaper way to do things. Because, and like many others who are just starting out with this, sort of feeling their way as they go along, can't afford to buy a lot of expensive things. So, um, yeah, I do it cheaply, as cheaply as I can. I think that um, the most expensive thing I have bought myself would be, um, I'm trying to think now, I think it would be that, um, oh, brain, come on, think, what's it called, that um, ink archival ink oh, I don't think this is looking too fabulous yeah I have other um, things that are dearer than that but um, they've all been gifted to me which I'm so grateful for from family. <clears throat> Just have a close up look here. Hmm. Her eyes are a blobby mess. She looks funny. <laughs> I like to do my girls with big eyes. So they're, you know, quite big for that little face. Um, what shall I do now? I want to do her eyelids. Excuse me a second. blue eyeshadow. Yeah, um, yesterday afternoon I took ages cleaning up. I made a huge mess in here. Because while I'm working I sort of tend to chuck things on the floor and on the bed because I'm in the spare room. Um, so there's a bed in here. And um, yeah, I just spread my stuff far and wide. I have to turn around and clean it up afterwards. Mainly because if I don't, I'll be tripping over things. And I don't need any more reason to trip over than I've already got. Hmm. I still need to do a little bit more finer detail. Oops. Put that off on there. Hmm. I'll leave that for a little while and go around to the 
rest of her body. <coughs> this is um, probably a little bit thick, this marker, but it's the only one that I have that works really well. Oops, I try and keep my line straight. Here is really big and fat, sort of fat knee. Hear the birds. No. I notice when I play back the um, the video when I'm putting it together to do the editing, I notice sometimes the birds singing that I hadn't noticed while I was actually doing the stuff in here, and then I hear them singing on the video. We have a lot of um, ravens around at the moment. It's probably mostly what you can hear that we have blackbirds and sparrows although like I've said before they um, they're hanging around this winter whereas normally a lot of them go away we also have those um, Indian minor birds which here they are a pest. They're not, oh my gosh, that line's a bit thick around her chin. <laughs> um, yeah, the Indian miners are a real pest here. They, um, they kick the native birds out of their nest. And, um, they're really bold. They'll, they'll come and um, if you happen to have the door open, they will come into the house to try and, say, steal your pet food if it's still sitting in the bowl. And they're just, yeah, they're quite aggressive. They're quite um, nasty birds, so no one here tends to like them very much. And the problem is, too, that they breed on a very large scale, so if you have a few that move into the area it doesn't take long for their numbers to build up really high and then they become a really bad environmental problem um, and uh, I think the council have organized on several occasions within different suburbs to capture the birds and um, I don't know what they do with them. I presume they probably kill them, which is pretty awful. I don't like to think of animals being killed. I love animals. Even the ones that are not so nice. But I guess they, um, they see the necessity to keep their numbers down, otherwise they will take over and we won't have any native birds left. real happy with her face but I'll keep going see how it turns out go around her little eyes eyeballs sorry I probably got my hand right in the way now but I need to be able to oops need to be able to see myself what I'm doing. Hmm, what do you think? <laughs> She's a bit funny. She's a bit funny.
Okay, what will I do next? Oh, while I was off um, waiting for the noise to shut down, I coloured in the butterflies with some metallic markers. I only have these... Um, these four markers. I have a green one as well. But since I love green so much, I've almost worn the thing completely out. I don't think that it even, I was saying I don't think that it even works, but now I've just tested it on the paper, it is actually working, but the nib is um doesn't come to a fine point anymore. It's been squashed, so I can't do any sort of fine work on it. So I might flip over and do these butterflies here. Um, <clears throat> just to do have a change of what I'm doing. So I'll just alternate these little butterfly lines with the colours. Bit of fun colouring in. My daughter loves colouring in. It's a really relaxing um, thing to do. You just let your mind go free and not have to concentrate or worry about anything except what's on the page in front of you. Yeah, and our daughter's been under quite a bit of stress recently um, in terms of studying. She's um, actually in training and she's almost finished her course to become a train driver, which um, is not something you normally think of girls doing. But um, just recently, the probably in the last couple of years, the uh, organisation that runs a train system have been trying to encourage women to um, get on board. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Um, yeah, so they've been welcoming women into the field. So, considering that uh, her boyfriend is already a train driver and he was in training when they met, um, she decided to apply and, and do it as well. And she's really good at it. She's, um, she's done extremely well with um, her learning and, and testing in particular. So yeah, we're very, very proud of her. She's, um, because it's an extremely difficult thing to learn, but there are so many, um, so many different things that you need to learn and it's very um, intense. As there are just the few things that I know is that um, there are two different types of train in operation here and they need to learn this, the system, the complete you know, works of the train inside and out. They need to know that off by heart and um, you know, amongst a whole lot of other things to do with the rail line and um, Yeah, it's just, it's, um, I don't know what to tell you because I'll probably <laughs> remember it incorrectly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we just, we, we're really pleased for her because she's very happy um, in doing the job. Although, you know, like I said, she's been under pressure too because they do assessments um, on a regular basis, which are, yeah, hardcore, and a lot of them you have to get 100% pass on them. You, you know, there's no room for, you know, a mistake here or there. Um, some of them, you know, it's all right if you um, miss a couple of points, and that they'll just make sure that you go over that again and and um, learn that properly. 
but um, there are a couple of issues particularly to do with um, learning all the different signals and what they mean and yeah, the sa safety side of it as well. They have to know that 100% because if you think about it, they're not just driving a train, but they're in charge of um, people's lives. And they, they carry a lot of passengers at one time and they're responsible for whatever happens to those people in that train, you know. The only downside to doing that job is that um, there can be quite a number of fatalities within driving a train which is really awful and, and I really worry for our daughter that um, one day she will experience that. Apparently what's happened is that um, we have a really tall bridge here and um, people used to jump off that as you know their main means of suicide which is horrible but it happens. Um, And um, something really shocking that happened a few years ago was a man actually threw his child off that bridge, which was just shocking. Um, so there was a lot of campaigning to, to um, put up barriers on that bridge to stop people from doing that. Um, but the, um, the outcome of that is that people who really want to commit suicide and are intent on doing it are now throwing themselves in front of trains instead because they don't have access to that bridge. Um, which is just awful. You know, it's awful that people are in that position where they feel like they can't go on anymore, that their life is not worth living. And it's all for the, for the train drivers because they witness that right in front of their face, you know. Yeah, so we worry a lot that that's going to happen to our daughter one day. They are taught in their training course that um, it is inevitable throughout the time that you are driving as a train driver that you will one day experience something like that because it's statistics are so high um, her boyfriend has already experienced one and of course you know that bothered him for quite a long time you can't stop thinking about it but the good thing about the organisation is that they support their drivers 100% if a fatality occurs they have to report it immediately and they are taken off that train um, and taken into um, a debriefing counselling session and then they have to take time off from the job in order to you know just come to terms with it and learn how to sort of cope with the aftermath of what that's done to them psychologically. Um, they're very well supported. All the other dri train drivers are very supportive of each other. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's good in that respect, but it's awful that these things happen. Um, however, and I like this attitude. Um, that uh, her boyfriend Ben and now she has the same attitude that if, if um, I'm just putting the whites in her eyes, um, if they were to experience a, um, a suicide, they both say that they feel they would be able to come to terms with that more easily than they will be able to with a um, an accident, you know, say someone accidentally falls onto the train line in front of them and they aren't able to stop in time because these trains are so big and heavy it takes a really long time to come to a stop even 
when they throw on the emergency brake. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, they think, oh, why didn't the train driver stop? You know, it's their fault. But it's not. They're in control of extremely heavy, powerful um, butchered that. <laughs> yeah, they're in, in control of these trains and um, they're very hard to react in an emergency situation. There are of course some instances where um, unfortunately cars try to cross over a rail railway crossing when a train is coming and for whatever reason they get stuck on the line and can't get off in time um, of course then the train will hit that car and sometimes people are killed or severely injured um, but that also affects the train driver as well because there's uh, not very much in front of them they're right at the front of the train there's a big glass window and like with a car you don't have that bonnet you know that bumper bar or anything to um, give you a bit of protection and our daughter said that what they are actually told to do is that if they're in a situation where they can see that they're not going to be able to stop in time they need to um, throw on the emergency brake, of course, to do the best that they can in the situation and then get out of that cabin, that front cabin, because there are doors in between each cabin um, which go into the next carriage and with the train drivers, you know, if they were to go through that door, they go into the first carriage of the train behind the engine, or behind the cabin. and. Um, they're told that they need to get into there in a hurry to save themselves from being crushed. Um, personally, as a passenger, I think that would be awfully scary if you saw the train driver come dashing through the door. <laughs> um, you know, obviously in a panic to save themselves. I'm having a lot of trouble here trying to get her eye to sit right because it's such a small area. Yeah, so that's um, that's what's been going on with our daughter. And she's been in training for the last 18 months or so. And at this stage they've only been learning half the railway system. Once she qualifies she will be driving for I think it's six months on her own. And... Um, then she and the rest of the students that were in her class will need to go back into um, the classroom and learn the other half of the system, which is just all the different train tracks, the stations and, and all the signalling that goes along with those particular places, that, certain places that have a different um, aspect to them than other stations. I don't know if I'm explaining this properly. Emma's probably shaking her head going, Mom, you're butchering it up. <laughs> That's not how it is at all. <laughs> Ooh, really not happy with her eyes. Oh, well. I suppose I could paint over the top and just leave her face blank. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think about it and come back. Back to it at another stage, I think, when I might be in a different mood. I will just paint in some lips for her. And some brilliant red. Oh. Yeah, I was just thinking yesterday that... Um, all the members of our little immediate family are um, quite talented in terms of drawing and painting and except for me I always thought oh I wish I was as good as my kids are at drawing and 
painting and, and even my husband is um, very good as well, although he doesn't do much of it. But if I'm, I'm struggling with how to do something that he might be able to do better than me, I'll ask him for little pointers. But yeah, I always thought, oh, you know, I'm the only dud in this family that can't do anything creative like that. But I'm learning now that um, I can, and I am. <laughs> I am doing it, even if it's just to satisfy myself. It's fun. That's the main point. It's fun. And you lose yourself completely in what you're doing. And it takes your mind off your worries. And for me, it helps me cope with my pain. And... Um, Yeah, as I was saying yesterday about my brain condition, that um, the other issue is that I live with a constant base level of dizziness that isn't going to go away. On some days it's harder than others. Um, there are quite a few days where I will just spend the whole day on the couch. I can't get up and move about because my head either hurts too much or is um, making me too dizzy. Um, and I, I get the sensation, not so much that the room is spinning, but that I am spinning. Um, or I'm falling. I remember early on when I first went into hospital, they had to put... Um, little guardrails up around the bed for me just to give me that sense of security that I wasn't actually falling out of bed because I just felt the whole time that I was falling off the edge of the bed and I was going to crash on the floor at any minute and it's just the brain, you know, playing tricks on you um, <clears throat> I also have some days where I feel like my head is really full of pressure and it's going to pop at any minute. Um, or also some days where I feel like I'm I'm on um, what do you call them? Those merry-go-rounds that go round and round. The kids have in the playground. Yes, that's not too pleasant. But on the good days, I get to really enjoy myself doing what I like to do. And at other times, if I'm really feeling that lousy, I will either try and sleep it off or um, just lie still and watch TV. I like a lot of different TV shows. A lot of the time, I have to listen rather than watch because some of the movement make me feel really sick. But you'd be surprised how much you can figure out what's going on just by listening. And generally, if I'm watching a movie or something and it's all right to watch and then all of a sudden there's, um, you know, an action scene or something that's doing all those what I consider awful camera movements, <laughs> um, I'll close my eyes and listen and I can tell by the level of the music when that particular action part that makes me feel sick is over and I can it's safe to open my eyes again. Oh yeah. So that's that. Now I might leave her at that for the moment, let that dry and I'll have another look at it. Her eyes in particular I mean. Alright, so now I want to First of all, check what the time is. Yeah. Okay, I need to go and eat. Um, I had to take my tablets at a particular time and then I have to eat um, an hour after that. So that's that time now. So I'll go and get myself some lunch and I'll come back after that, after I've eaten and 
continue working on this so bye for now